right, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the product rule here. And the product rule <coughs> is something that uh, allows us to find the derivative of certain functions that we couldn't find the derivative of without the product rule. So, um, let's go ahead and take a look at this function right here. y is equal to x times sine of x. So, you know, at this point we're still new to derivatives. You know, we have the power rule. You know how to take the derivative of a couple sine functions, but this doesn't directly fit into either category because the power rule is, you know, something just set up y equals x to the a power, and you know you can see sine is separate. So this is x times sine of x. This is a little bit different. So we're going to use the product rule. So here's the product rule. I'm not going to go through and prove it right here. You know, maybe in another video at some point I will, but um, for right now I'll just say the product rule works when you have two functions multiplied by each other. So, you know, y equals f of x times g of x, if you just kind of generalize things, okay? So, what the product rule says is that the derivative um, of a function, where two functions are multiplied by each other, would be um, f of x times g prime of x plus g of x times f prime of x, okay? So, that right there is the rule we are going to use to find the derivative of this function. So when I look at this, you know, the, the x is like in the spot where the f of x is, and the sine of x is in the spot where the g of x is. So just to kind of be real thorough right here, let's just say if I call that x function, let's call that f of x, okay, just to help us, you know, go along with this uh, formula that we're looking at here. And then g of x would be sine of x. So in order to fill in to this formula, which tells me how to find the derivative of a product of two functions, um, I need to find g prime and f prime. So, okay, f prime of x, the derivative of x is just 1, okay? g prime of x, the derivative of sine of x is equal to cosine x. So now I need to find uh, the derivative of that. That was my goal from the beginning, is find the derivative of this here. So, it's just f of x times g prime of x, okay, so that's x times cosine x, so x cosine x, plus, and then it's g of x times f prime of x, so g of x times f prime, sine of x times 1, which is just sine of x. So, there you go, that right there is the derivative using the product rule. Um, now, normally, you know, I don't actually go through and write this f of x and g of x up. If you want to, and that works for you, go right ahead. Usually I think of it as, you know, the first function times the derivative of the second, plus the second function times the derivative of the first, you know, and you can even do it, you could reverse that since they're separated by a plus sign. It doesn't matter which order you put them in. But, you know, usually I'll think of that as opposed to writing out the g of x and the f of x in there. But again, if you want to write those out, not a problem. Okay, that will work out just fine uh, every time. So let's just look at one more example real quick here. So let's say we have something like this. Um, so you have f of x is equal to 3 minus 2x times 5x cubed plus 7x. Okay, so again, you can see here's a, a product of 3 minus 2x times 5x cubed plus 7x. So that's why we're going to apply the product rule. You could on this one, if you wanted to, uh, expand this all out you know, combine it like terms and so forth, and take your derivative of each term individually. You know, it wouldn't be that horrible in this case to do that. There, you'll see as we get going with other types of problems, that would be a big pain. But let's just practice the product rule just because on this one. So let's say this first function here is kind of like the f of x we have here. Don't confuse that with this f of x. I'm just kind of breaking these up into two separate uh, things right here. And this one right here, we'll kind of think of as like g of x. So again, if you want to, you could write f of x equals 3 minus 2 of x, g of x equals 5x cubed plus 7x, okay? Um, I'm going to just go ahead and say, okay, you know, so you might even do this in your head, but the derivative of 3 minus 2x is negative 2, okay? So this is kind of like my f prime, right? Because I'm thinking of this as like my f of x in this case, so this is the derivative, that's like my f prime. So here's my g of x, the derivative of that is going to be 15x squared plus 7. Okay, so this is like, you know, if I'm thinking this is like my g of x over here, that's like this is g prime. So when I find the derivative of my function, I use the product rule, and, you know, you can think of it like this, f of x times g prime, or 
the first function times the derivative of the second, either way, but it's going to be the 3 minus 2x, okay, which is like our f of x, times, and then g prime of x, which is the derivative of our other function, so it's 15x squared plus 7, and then plus, and then I have the g of x function, which is the one right here, okay, 5x cubed plus 7x, and then multiply times the derivative of my f of x function, um, f prime, and that's going to be times negative 2. Okay. And you could, of course, distribute this and combine like terms and all that fun stuff. I am not going to do that, um, because this is the derivative, that's the answer. So I'm going to leave it uh, as this.